should use a laser. Nice. Yeah. Go ahead and start the meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please. Roll call. Mark Cinnamon. Present. Jeff Cooker. Here. Allison Kidprop. Here. Denny is absent. Joy Faye. Here. David Simpson. Here. Okay. Additions to the agenda. Right now I have one item. Um, I've been. Uh, I will bring up under new business in regard to Potter Water. Um, first, I need. If there are no additions, additional additions, I need approval of the agenda. Make a motion. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Next item will be citizens addressing the board. First, we have Kaylin. Kaylin Welch. <coughs> For future reference, it's Callan. Sorry, Jim. That's not a big deal. So, I'm going to tell a story about how I ended up in Shavana. I'm a real estate agent, entrepreneur, and investor. I found this property that had great potential, the Shavana Hotel. It was in rough shape with many years of deferred maintenance behind it, but could prove ultimately to be a great asset to me and to the little town of Shavana which seemed to be having a real economic issue with vacancies all around. I thought to myself, what an amazing opportunity. In one fell swoop, I can invest in a great asset, mind you, with many tens of thousands of dollars, and likely eventually hundreds of thousands of dollars of money and years of time investment, while providing an affordable place to stay for people in a town that could really use it. I thought the town could really use a catalyst to kickstart economic years in a place with great potential and a great setup for being an incredible destination and place to live. While I was looking at the property, a neighbor warned me to talk to the mayor first, so I did. I called up the mayor. I was met with a list of demands. There was no, great, that's wonderful that you're considering investing in our town, a list of demands. He told me the village wanted to tear down the porch and the ramp. By the way, you can't live there due to our zoning ordinance. Also, you can't run the building known as the Shabana Hotel as a hotel without a variance. If you get the variance, be aware we're going to be making overnight parking by permit only, so your business may be screwed. Also, you can't leave it empty either because we'll find you for that. Not one word about working with me to help make the dream of refurbishing this building and populating it with thriving businesses a reality. He said maybe the village would be willing to help with running a ramp around the back, which is useless to me, but that would be up to the board. I thought to myself, well, working with this village government may be a nightmare. But I'm a reasonable guy, I'll work with anybody, and the dream is worth it. I can really make an impact in this town. So I purchased the property. There were many arrangements that needed to be made before I could get moving, but not two weeks after I purchased the property, I received a certified letter in the mail accusing me of breaking the zoning ordinance and living on the first story. I lived in Big Rock and had barely the chance to look at the property yet. I believe I have a copy of the letter. The letter is worded as such. Dear Mr. Welsh, when we spoke on the phone, I thought I was clear on the occupation of the building at 104 West Comanche. In order to occupy the building, you must comply with all village ordinances. The council has recommended that I contact you in regard to certain ordinance violations brought to our attention at your property located at 104 West Comanche Avenue. It has been reported that you or someone is lodging on the first floor of the building. If this is true, you must cease and desist occupancy. So, frankly, I found this infuriating. What a warm welcome. What a warm invite to the village of Shavana. Firstly, I simply didn't believe that the board recommended this threatening letter. Why would you not just call and ask? I spoke with you, Don, about your concerns around vacant buildings in town and agreed with them. Why would you treat someone who has promised to invest in your town and help to directly resolve the exact vacant buildings issue you say is your top priority this way. With threats and demands, and it wasn't true. 
I broke no ordinance, I wasn't even there. Instead of talking like a respectful human being, you came to me with harassment and bullying and threats. And you treated my good friend Josh Snyder the exact same way. And you treated other friends I've made in town the exact same way. Since purchasing the property, I've made tens of thousands of dollars in investment and many months of blood, sweat, tears, and sleepless nights on fixing the place up. Josh Snyder has also done the same with his building, 103 West Comanche. Another formerly vacant building that is actively being remodeled with 100% of the financial risk on us and us alone. My business depends on parking. Up to 2011, the parking lot adjacent to my building was part of the same lot the building sits on. The village filed a suit of adverse possession for the lot and won with some conditions. When I expressed my concerns that the recent streetscape project would eliminate a drastic amount of parking next to my building, bringing the usable spaces in the lot from 14 to 5, no one in the room asked, is there anything we can do to help support this business, one of only a handful we have downtown? Instead, I was told, and I quote, the village is not required to provide private parking, and we left it at that. Okay, that may be true, but then I would question why on earth the village wanted that lot in the first place. In any case, the village should not be telling the very people making the largest investments into downtown to go jump in a lake when they voice their concerns. They should be working with those business owners to help find solutions that are good for everybody. That brings me to the ramp. Have, excuse me, but I'm going to have to have you wrap this up in about 30 seconds. You have five minutes, and that five minutes is about up. Can I have three minutes? Fine, three minutes. Okay. As you may be aware, our office represents the village of Shavanagh, and I've been asked by the village to contact you regarding the handicap ramp and rail at your property listed above. I have been instructed to demand that you remove the handicap rail immediately as it encroaches on village property. For your information, improvements to the property it sits on will necessitate its removal, and failure to remove the ramp and rail may hinder that project, subjecting you to monetary damages. The ramp predates the adverse possession case. Obviously, the ramp is good for my business because it allows wheelchair users access to the first floor. So why would the village want to destroy it? I could think of a couple of valid reasons, but no reason is ever given me for the desire to demolish the ramp. As far as I could tell, this was a personal pet project of Don Goncher because not a single board member ever talked to me about it. I was led to believe the streetscape project necessitated its demolition, but upon looking at the documents, that was very clearly not the case. In all the engineering documents, the ramp remains untouched. The ramp is in the way of nothing, so what's the point of demanding that demolish it? Just because you enjoy wielding power? Whose interest does it serve? You take the parking lot from the hotel, you yank away most of the parking as well, and you also demand I demolish my ramp on my porch, all while threatening to charge me with ordinance violations I did not commit. Why make it so difficult for me to run a business? Whose interests are you serving? At every single step of the way, I've been impeded, and no one has ever asked, how can we help? This despite the fact that I'm one of only a handful in town actually doing something about the vacant building problem. I've invested close to $100,000 into the project and have made no money and won't for several years at best. I've inherited nothing. These are my life savings on the line. I've done everything by the book. I've complied with the zoning rules. And I met with every turn, I met at every turn with malice and approached with threats and bullying. I've heard from multiple board members that nobody wants to work with us. If nearly every single property and business owner in the village is turned off by this board, which I can attest is in fact the case, then perhaps this board, and especially this village president, need to look inward rather than outward at everybody else. Look at how you're treating people and ask, why would anybody ever want to work with you? I've had the pleasure of speaking to a number of people in this room personally, and I personally like a lot of you. And I think ultimately we, want the both, we both want the same thing for Shabana. I want to bring Shabana back. This is a great town with so much potential, and it bothers me on a deep fundamental level that a town like this has fallen so far. Bringing Shabana back will never happen when so many feel they've been unfairly treated by the village government, including me. You have to understand that you are wielding the iron fist of government, 
Everything you do carries a threat with it, ultimately a violent force for noncompliance. That power should not be wielded carelessly and haphazardly, but should be wielded with great care and caution. You have that responsibility as acting members of government. Uh, Mark, I believe we're going to be except for later this week. Is that right? Um, I don't recall when we do, but it's possible. Okay. I, I don't remember. I, I don't remember. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to you after that. Uh, I don't think it makes sense with limited time to try to reach an agreement right here. I'm probably going to bed right after this meeting. But I'm happy to schedule a meeting with any board member individually later this week at any time. You guys have my number, uh, and I'm very flexible. If you think I'm crazy or unreasonable, that's your priority, but please talk to me, find out. I will promise to tell you the God's honest truth, and I hope that's worth something to you. Thank you. Now we'll hear from Josh Schneider. So I sent an email to the, bill, uh, the building shop and not together at the Economic Development Subcommittee, and I also forwarded the email to all of you. Uh, I'd like to just read it to get it on the record. I haven't been too public about this until recently because I thought I could follow all of the rules and do the right and do things the right way to renovate one of our downtown buildings and put a new business in town. I purchased 103 West Comanche Avenue, across the street from my office, the Shabana Hotel, with the plan to renovate the downstairs into a retail store and the upstairs into apartments. I knew getting into it that the village is very hostile to the property owners downtown. But I figured I don't know the full stories people are telling me. And I'm willing to follow the ordinances and rules. I bought the building in late March and immediately hired a mason to pick up the block work, to fix up the block work, and scheduled a roofer to perform some repairs. Overall, I wanted to get the building shell fixed up so I could start on the inside. I told each company that I'm trying to do everything exactly by the book and was insistent on them getting permits before any work was done. The mason needed to do the work first, and it took over two weeks for BNF to issue the permit, but that is not the village's fault. They did not begin repairing my building until the permit was issued, but that did not stop the village president from calling BNF the very first day the mason started, with an issued permit claiming that I was illegally building apartments on the second floor without a permit. Vince from BNF called me and asked what was going on, and I explained that I have a permit for the masonry repairs and no work is being, being performed to renovate apartments. That ended the witch hunt more or less, or so I thought. Then the, street, the, the streetscape construction began. I ended up getting a call from someone at Fairgram, the company who's in charge of the project, about the wooden cover that was in front of my building. She explained that the original street, streetscape drawings had them cutting the concrete sidewalk, sidewalk around the cover, but when they got there and saw it, they thought it was better to remove it, reinstall it, and put up a steel railing to block it up. I said I was fine with it, but as long as they weren't going to fill in underneath it. It is covering an old stairwell that leads to the basement of my building. I explained I would like to reopen the stair in the near future to allow the basement to serve as further retail or other space instead of being dead space. I also had asked if it was possible to move the parking lot they were building next to my, next to my building over slightly so vehicles were less likely to hit my building. Bear Graham said that the parking lot had more than enough space to be moved over and would ask IDOT. Later that day, I received an email saying that I thought had approved the modification and that the only party left that needed to agree was the village. There was an infrastructure committee meeting later that week, so I went and explained what, what I was asking and tried to explain that I thought and Fair Graham had already said it was okay. I also mentioned that I was working with Fair Graham about the wooden covering. Don Concher then went on a huge, long rant about how the covering was on village property, which it is not, and that he was going to have them rip it out and fill it in with concrete. I tried to explain that the box is actually on my land, but he would not listen and continued to threaten filling it in with concrete. I decided to give up and let, the, let him rant and threaten. 
When he got to his parking lot during the rant, he basically said he was going to refuse to work with Bing. Now, before Don's rant, Mark Cinnamon did bring up a valid point about a concern if it would cost any extra to move the parking lot to give credit where it is due. The end result of the parking lot and wooden covering did end well with me, but pretty much only because of Bear Graham. I truly believe Don intended to be petty on this issue of the parking lot and was trying to illegally fill in my cereal. But I talked to Bear Graham after that meeting, and they scheduled a meeting with Don and Mark to advocate in my favor. Bear Graham had agreed with me that the ri there was a risk of vehicles hitting my building and having more of a buffer was a good idea. And I guess they were able to explain to Don that the stairwell is my private property and they could not fill it in. My next tribulation I'm encountering is with regards to the Certificate of Zoning Compliance. I submitted my, my application towards the end of April along with the required fee. It has been almost a month now and I'm still waiting to receive it. I've been emailing Jen Morrison every so often asking for an update on the status. And after being ignored for about a week, I received an email on Friday, May 17th, saying that she forwarded the application to BNF and that they will be doing an inspection on Monday, the 20th, which is today. There is no inspection requirement for being issued this certificate, so I asked why they are requiring one. I have not yet received an explanation. I have been attending the Village Board meetings, and they are always talking about how all they want is compliance with the ordinances. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm complying with the ordinances. I'm getting all of the permits required. I'm filing for the Certificate of Zoning Compliance. But why won't they follow their ordinances that have a clear outline of what is required to be issued these certificates? For reference, the requirements are every applicant for a certificate of zoning compliance shall Excuse submit me. to I'm the administrator. I'm going to have to cut you off. You've had more than five minutes. Okay? okay. And we I received like, that letter. The letter is a part of the record. May I continue to ask why have I not received a certificate of zoning compliance? Yeah, I'm, three minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll now move to reports and actions. The village engineer, Chastain. Okay, uh, well, as you can see, uh, the Chevrolet Water Main Project has started, and uh, Apache Street is underway. Um, be patient, it's going to be messy. Uh, everything's being excavated, and all the pipes going in the ground. Um, but, you know, once, once everything's in the ground, be cleaned up, and um, be nice to move on after that. It's just one of those things with construction jobs. You know, and it does does make it difficult during construction. Um, we're not ready for any pay estimates yet on uh, the um, the water main project, but that'll be coming next month. That'll be the first pay estimate that we'll be bringing forth for that. Um, any questions on those projects? Okay, and Cindy, I think you've got an issue that we'll be addressing, um, you know, with uh, service yeah. and the yeah. so, Yep. Okay. Any other questions for Curtis? Uh, yeah, it, okay. I think I understand it right, that the lead line replacements, if I read it right, they, from like the, the buffalo box, and they the, be replaced to 18 inches within the inside of the basement or mm -hmm. where they go in. Space for how we work up, and then the homeowner is responsible for that right. inside. That's correct. Right. Uh, yeah. That's what. Yeah. 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 And uh, the contractor is responsible for restoration mm -hmm. of the outside. Yeah. 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 The contractor is responsible. Yes, it's in the specifications that the contractor. Oh, okay. Because what we signed said that the village was the, responsible. Well, yeah, the, the IEP agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we placed that responsibility on the contractor in the specification. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Driveways, sod, you know, like restoration. Okay. Uh, you have any questions, buddy? Or? There was, I, there's only two lead lines all the way to the house. Right. On there, the rest are all above the house. Within the street. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So there are not going to be as many um, services going from the Buffalo Boss to the house as what we originally thought. So instead of what was it, eight, I think we had originally. Yeah, we sent out eight notices. Mm -hmm. uh, there's only two? There's only two. No, the whole line is only two of them. Right, from the Buffalo Box to the house. Yeah. Well, we're so, the we're so disturbing the lead line from the main to the Buffalo Box, so that's bad too. Right. That's why it's considered So which two is it hitting? Yours and, and, and 211. Okay. Yeah. 211. 208 and 211. Yeah. Uh, how many are there south of Rutherford? None. Mm -hmm. None? No, there's eight total on the whole project. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's a newer water main down there. That's yeah. what I kind of thought. So, I mean, that's nice. That'd be one with less quantity. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, if you have any questions at any time, you know, just give me a call or, you know, Bob, Bob Pettigrew is our guy on, on site. Um, as you can tell, you know, Bob's been around construction for a long time. Um, and he'll get a hold of either myself or Mark Painter, the engineer on the job. Make a comment, the guys on Apache Street, they don't stand around. No, no <laughs> they're, 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 they're working fools, that's for sure. Yeah, they're working fools. That looks like a bottom right off, but they're working fools. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Thank you. All right. Bud? Oh. <laughs> that would be you, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sleeping here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we put gravel behind the downtown and got that grading of some, you know, there in that alleyway. Uh, been working with Martin O'Brien and Elton Wood on locates for uptown and on Apache and on North Shaver Road. Uh, we also worked with Castane uh, for the response for the uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, issues that we had, and we got all that stuff filed and sent back to the EPA. The Jen sent that. Uh, and also, we responded to the IEPA inspection report that we got from them for a couple months ago, the 12th of April, I think it was. And we had the inspection, and that's all been done. I was working on continuing education on my water license, as I can't go out and shovel and do that kind of stuff. The hydrant is, has a meter on it for the community garden now, out here. The radios have been delivered for the village. We have one that's on back order, and that's for the big truck, but we've got all four handhelds and two of the, the mounted ones, and they're in the vehicles. They came out this past week and did that. Okay. Uh, flags for Uptown for Memorial Day. Hmm. Are you shaking your head now? No, are they? No, no. Uh, do we put them up still? I thought she was shaking her head now. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no okay. I don't. You, you have, did they have them up there last year? Yeah, we yeah. put them up every year. But it's we kind of them up, bit, yeah. Okay. When are they going to do the streetlights up there? I'm thinking, yeah. I'm wondering, because we usually leave them up all summer. Get with Royce. I'll talk to Rice. Yeah, because yeah, John's going to climb the ladder. Because if they're going to they're gonna take the poles down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I like to have the flags up, but yeah. I'm just trying to. Right. Okay. okay. I got you. Any other questions? <coughs> Anything <coughs> else, Bud? We okay. have the little banners. <coughs> we, we, didn't, we didn't put those up. We haven't put them up. We ought to be waiting for the. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had banners up in quite a few years. No, most of them the winds. Yeah, the, the, kind of the new street lights yeah. have different smaller size yeah. banners. Yeah, rather than that big sails. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the ones with the street lights and no our conventions. Yeah. Any other questions from Bud? All right. Let's go to committee reports, infrastructure, Mark. Mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot of report. We haven't had meetings since uh, early April. Um, I see later on there's the streetscaping report. I can come make some comments on that thing. I do talk to Royce at least once a week, occasionally okay, twice a week, and kind of let everybody know where that stands. Okay. Um, Allison, anything for finance? No, nothing for finance. How about development? Anything on the. Uh... Mm, no, I mean, not from like our committee. Yeah. Okay. The other one, we're you know working with the engineer regarding pretty park, pretty park. design and all that. So, okay. um, and there was a meeting 
Thursday. Um, just discuss, you know, different, well, we need to find out exactly how much the park is going to cost before we discuss, like, fundraisers and mm -hmm. things like that. But, so just discussing things like that. Um, then we'll go over to public affairs, Dave. Um, we have a meeting coming up on June 6th, right here at 6 p.m. Um, to discuss the Fourth of July Festival. And I think everything's pretty well wrapped up. We just need to, like, go over everything and make sure everything's wrapped up. So... Um, good. Um, good. Saturday morning. Farmer's Market. Farmer's, farmer's market. market, yeah. Saturday morning, Farmer's Market starts June 1st, I believe. So, uh, if anybody can attend, that would be really great. Okay. And at least the last day, that there was something else you had going on. Garden. The community that's, garden. That's already been. It's up and running. Got some pretty nice looking little gardens in there. Could use some more. Anybody wants to put in the garden? Mm -hmm. yeah, anything for uh, anybody else? Have anything else for public affairs? If not, everybody takes, has taken a look at the sheriff's report. I think there's two of them in there for the past two months because they were running a little late on the one. Do you have any questions? Let me know. If not, let's move on to the village clerk. <clears throat> First item, approval of the regular board meetings. I'll make a motion to approve the... Second. April 22nd. Uh, second. Uh, board 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 board. Board. Call on that. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Next item will be zoning. Permits issued, plans reviewed, and the zoning board. Permit issued reports in there for your review. Um, there's been one more since I published that. So, and then there's about five of them pending payments. Or redo of plan reviews in a couple cases. Um, changes to building code status. That's the municipal minute page I gave out in the packet if you don't get the municipal minute it's a great thing to get it can forward to one so you can subscribe but this is notification that as of um last august 2023 they signed into law changes to the two state statutes one of them is if you make any changes to your building code the law requires as of january 1st you have to notify the Capital Development Board. What they did send out also was a letter to the clerk to, noti to respond to by June, end of June, um, what building code you're currently on for the records, which ours is mostly the 2018 um, International. So, and then they have to approve any changes in the future, so for different uh, ordinances. So just kind of an FYI. Was this to answer the question? Yeah. Was the intent of this to make the building codes as uniform as possible? I think so. From the way I interpreted it and read this, and based on the letter they sent <coughs> requesting to know. They've got it all broken out by what's your residential code, what's your mm -hmm. um, plumbing, mechanical, all those, um, as well as if there are any changes coming this year to your uh, building ordinance. Yeah, I think the idea ultimately is to get everybody, every community in the state to have a building code that is not more than nine years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure what year our building code is John D. 2018. Oh, yeah. Because we're, we're following yeah. the internationals, we changed that. Right. What, yeah, years but, ago, but a lot of but, years but a lot of communities don't adopt yeah. the newer international codes. Prior to that, we were in 2000 yet. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It was, it so was, we were yeah. about 18 years behind that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Next item. Zoning board nominations to fill two vacant zoning board seats, Laura Shep and Angela Dower. What do you have for them? 
the board needs to motion and second to approve. I need, yeah, I need the board to approve <coughs> my two nominations of Lord Chef and Angela. I have the motion to approve. Can I ask a question first? Okay. Can I have them introduce themselves right away? The board <laughs> <and> maybe <laughs> say so here things about. Hi, I'm Laura, I'm Laura Chef. I'm, re I'm new to Shabinaw, but um, I do have a background that uh, consists of construction. I come from a family of a construction contractor. I have also am familiar with looking at drawing. Um, just back years ago, I uh, was a sales uh, business manager for a fire alarm company. And so we installed a lot of fire alarms, pull permits and such. So I'm familiar with zoning uh, in that respect. And I also have two resources in my back pocket, which are my daughters. They are uh, infrastructure engineers. And I'm Angela Dower. I go by Angie. Um, and I am relatively new to Chavanaugh, but I live in a beautiful old house um, here in Chavanaugh. And so um, I am familiar with um, the uh, surveying and everything that it takes to, to, to you know, have new zoning. Um, and I love Chavanaugh. So <laughs> I appreciate the nomination. Okay. So I have. I a, make a motion. I have a motion. A second. I have a second to that motion. Was that for both? Yeah, for both. Or separate. Well, and you know, I'll need a roll call vote on this then, right? No. no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? If you guys could step up here, please. And, uh, no. John, we'll swear you in. I You do that. I come with cheat sheets. <laughs> oh, go, <no>, wrong one. <laughs> so if you could raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Angela Dower, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and the Constitution of the State of Illinois and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Zoning Board Member and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Zoning Board Member to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Awesome. You can keep that copy. Okay. And I just need you to sign this copy. Great. And then if you could fill this out and email it back to me or drop it at the office. All right. All right, Laura, you can raise your right hand. I state your name. I, Laura Shep. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Zoning Board Member to the best of my ability. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Zoning Board to the best of my ability. Sign this one. And I also, right. also gave you a sheet. Fill it out and scan it, email it back, or drop it off to the office. This the second page. The second page. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. You'll get a week or two notice. Yes, they will next year. Um, well, that will be a zoning meeting either in June or July. Okay. okay. We haven't had one yet this year, so. Okay. <coughs> Moving on to item C. Applications for Zoning Compliance, 104 West Comanche and 103 West Comanche. So 103 West Comanche, the Zoning Compliance Certificate was issued today. Um, 104 West Comanche, I apologize. 
I had misplaced that application and I finally found it. Um, actually, you're, and I will issue that tonight when I get home. Thank you. So. Um, no other questions there. Let's move on to item three, the news release from the IEPA. That was another FYI regarding our IEPA loan for the Shavana Road Project. Um, both Brad from Illinois Municipal League, the president of IML, and Representative Fritz sent uh, congratulatory notes to the village for getting one of 200 and 5 million in loans. That's what was issued in third quarter of fiscal year 24 with over 20 million in loan forgiveness granted. We didn't get 200 million. Nah. <laughs> We're on the bottom of the second page. We got 950,000 and forgave forgiveness of 475. <clears throat> okay. The first item will be approval of the bills and payroll for May 2024. I need a motion. Make a motion. <clears throat> second. I have a second. Discussion? There's no discussion. Can I have a roll call, please? Roll call vote. Jeff Cooker? Yes. Mark Simon? Yes. Allison Kid Prop? Yes. David Simpson? Yes. Joy Fay? Yes. And Denny is absent. Motion carried. Next item, we'll move on to the financials, the donation request. We have Lee Rollo. I believe we give to each of these annually. Uh, Lee Rollo, Shavana Fireworks, and Waterman Summer Recreation. Uh, I would ask, what did we give Lee Rollo last it's year? It's noted in the bottom corner. Okay, 250. Okay. And the... I need to do them one at a time. Okay, Please. I thought we could do them all together. All right. They'll probably all be different dollars. All right. <clears throat> For the Lee Rollo Shavana Community Trust, I need a motion to donate $250. Second. I have a second. Discussion? What do they do, they do again? In the brochure. They give yeah, you got the brochure. Yeah, the brochure is right there. The yeah. 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 Okay. Any other discussion? There's no further discussion. Could I have a roll call vote? Please? Roll call vote. Joy Fay? Yes. Jeff Cooker? Yes. Mark Cinnamon? Yes. Allison Kid Probst? Yes. David Simpson? Yes. Denny's absent. Motion carried. Okay, Shavana Fireworks. Last year we gave a 750. I need a motion to either take it up, leave it out of order that, or take it down. I make the motion we donate 800. Motion for 800. A second. Uh, I'll second. All right, I got a second. Discussion? <laughs> Are they going to continue this fireworks thing or is it kind of on its last item? I don't know. Doesn't they say last year that That's it was questionable? Year, yeah. That's why. Yeah. They said they, well, they posted out that they still needed funds for this year. For this year. Mm -hmm. Go on this year. Yeah. Any other discussion? If Denny were here, he could better tell us, but yeah. unfortunately, he's not here. I think, well, I, I don't know about the water rack one, but the other ones I think were at the Cow County Gibbs. They were in that group. I know and the fireworks. I think many of them received more money this year than they, I think. The fireworks this, received something over 2,000. And Lee Shavana Rollo received less than 2,000. Okay. Wasn't there enough for the pathway? I saw numbers. What's the date of this request? It's the letter that came in the mailbox this month. Okay. 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 second? Yeah. Or second. Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote to donate $800 to Shabana Fireworks. 
Joy Fay? Yes. Mark Sentiment? Yes. David Simpson? No. Allison K. Probst? Yes. Jeff Cooker? Yes. Four, one with one absent motion period. Okay, Waterman Summer Recreation. Last time we, in 2022, we donated $100. Apparently, they didn't make a request last year. Yeah, I just, just a question. The event, is it, do they use it for the event or is it just for the whole, like, season of year? Like, well, the board has donated a couple times before and I marked the, um, for that it's used towards equipment. Oh, okay. The field or equipment. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's up to you guys. I think it's cash and it goes towards equipment. Okay. It's just that the event happened this past weekend, so that's why I was asking that question. It's like, I need a motion. It was dated April 10th, but it didn't show up in the mailbox till after the last board meeting. I know in Indian Creek recreation still exists, correct? It does, yes. I thought it did. Yes. Um, in the, how many kids from, well, I'm sure there's kids from Shannon that they It's more for. Boys baseball. So the boys baseball is run under Waterman Summer Rack and the girls softball is run under Indian Creek Summer Rack. So that's how they divide those up. Okay. I'll make a motion to donate $100 to Waterman Summer Rack. Second. Got a second. Discussion? So this money will definitely benefit people in this community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, the boys, yeah. Yeah, yeah not, not in the agreement, but the boys, yeah. Okay. Are there other discussion? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote to donate $100 to Water Summer Recreation for use on equipment. Um, Allison kidd -Brooks. Yes. Joy Fig. Yes. David Simpson. Yes. Denny's absent. Jeff Cooker? Yes. Mark Simon? Yes. Motion carried. Next item would be the treasurer's report as of April 30, 2024. I need a motion for the step. Motion to accept the treasurer's report. I'll second. I have a second. Discussion? Roll call vote, please. Roll call vote to accept the treasurer's report of April 30, 2024. <coughs> David Simpson? Yes. Jeff Cooker? Yes. Joy Fay? Yes. Mark Cinnamon? Yes. Allison Kidd Prop? Yes. And Denny's absent motion period. Next time we have is utilities. The Shavana Road Project. Questions by okay. Treasurer. Um, when I was collecting the forms that needed to be signed off on, um, questions came up. I sent the questions to the to Bob, whatever his position is. He's a yeah, field tech. Mm -hmm. And he forwarded them to Martin so they were aware. Um, two of the neighbors have the wireless um, dog fences mm -hmm. and they wanted to make sure they wouldn't tear those up. Um, they were concerned about the um, flushing once every two weeks for three months for 30 minutes at a time until testing says there's no lead. And so on that one, I said I would bring it to the board my suggestion is for, so that would just be the two of us then mm -hmm. that have to do that. My suggestion is um, an average bill um, for the quarters that they have to do flush, and that was the concern. Mm -hmm. And it was coming out of one of them that turns out, well, they still have to flush, don't they? Even if they don't have the full amount into the house. Yeah, they'll still have to flush. But so everyone will still have to do the flushing. Right, but that whole lead service is really the ones it's aimed at. Okay. Okay. So that's eight people on the street that um, signed off. But that was one of the concerns was that their water usage is going to be high until that testing comes back and says we don't have to do flushing every two weeks. Did they usually have high bills along there? Yeah. Yeah, a few of them have really high bills. Oh, uh, then we... We, we, we should got to treat them all the same. Oh, okay. So you're saying they all either get a minimum? 
Well, no, I'm saying I would average what their bill, what their bill is, is for, for the last year. For the last year, okay. That's how I do an average, and then they, that's what that. they would get. You need a motion for that? I need no. guys' approval. No. Okay. No. Yeah, I agreement. Yeah, yeah, just go ahead with that. It's a money thing. Oh, we got a motion. Oh, yeah, all right. Then we need a motion. Then I'll make a motion for Cindy to average, average. their bills for the last year to the for the time that it's yeah. Yes. I have a second. Discussion. If there's no discussion, we'll call vote, please. Roll we'll call vote to average water bills for the eight residents that will have to do biweekly flushing following the line replacement. Ellison Kid Probes? Yes. Joy Faye? Yes. Mark Cinnamon? Yes. David Simpson? Yes. Jeff Cooker? Yes. Motion carried. The restoration of the ground surface. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Um, the restoration of the ground surface, um, Curtis has answered that question. Oh, that that's okay. up to the contractors. It's not on us. So okay. that's a new point. But I did have one other report for you under utilities. Um, 103 West Cherokee, the house is going into foreclosure. The bank has contacted me and informed me that they have water damage inside suddenly. And we did, when we took the readings, 400 and, where's my note, I'm sorry, 434,000 gallons had gone through last quarter. Um, Buddy and John. Well, that's what it said, but the water's 000. been off, so. Yeah, but the water's been off. John and Buddy went right away, because I didn't have notice that a bank had it. I called Cindy, the owner, and she couldn't get in. She didn't have keys. She was going to give me the information for who was taking it over. And they finally called. She never called me back. So I've been in communication. We've been leaving messages this last week. Um, and she has the information that we had shut it off the last July, the last time. And um, so it's been off all this time. And then suddenly there was this usage. So And now she's saying they've got water damage. So just to make you aware, this is an ongoing I don't know what's where it's going to go from here. She never got back to me again today. Yeah, yeah the old Davies house. Davies house yeah. So, any questions for Cindy? <clears throat> All right, then we will move on to item E. This will be the annual appropriations ordinance for the village of Shavanaugh. Uh, we'll be looking in consideration. We're looking for the approval. We've had two readings. This is the final approval of the 20, 2425-20A fiscal year 25 appropriations ordinance. I'm going to need a motion to accept that appropriations. I make a motion to accept that appropriations. Okay. I have a second. Any discussion? If there is no discussion, can I have a roll call vote, please? Roll call vote to approve ordinance 2024-0520, parentheses A, uh, appropriations for fiscal year 25. Joy Fay? Yes. yes. David Simpson? Yes. Allison Kidcroft? Yes. Mark Simpson? Yes. Jeff Cooper? Yes. One absent, motion carried. Okay. Move on to old business. Under old business, we have property notices violations update. Heard anything back? 108 West Cherokee and 108 South Line. I had received notices to clean up the properties and remove vehicles. On the way, West Cherokee, I, I we've heard nothing back from him. Uh, 108 South Line. Nothing. Next to that joint. And I have not heard 304 West Navajo. I believe, I don't know if BNF went back there to inspect the exterior of the building. I haven't heard anything back from them, so I'll have to contact the BNF. I don't think I don't think they've heard any. I know we've sent notices to 108, and I think 108 South the line. So, so we'll have to follow up on those. Any questions? Move on to the vacant buildings. On the vacant buildings, 
Maybe down those no property owners of registered vacant buildings nor have any requested to present plan for remediation to the board. We have not received anything from the vacant buildings, correct? Correct. That's all I got. Okay. Then we'll move on to downtown streetscape update. I think we have a representative from Fairground. Buddy, have you seen anything? Anything, uh, anything new? <coughs> I know the parking is, uh, they're working on the north side now. And uh, on the north side, what? Mark did a comment. Go ahead. Have you talked to Royce this last few days? No, I haven't. I talked to him on, uh, it was the middle of last week, I think. Um, and he said everything was going well, you know, there's been some adjustments made, and he thought uh, he'd be done by the end of June. Uh, so, we'll go up for good. But are the street lights in? They, no. they haven't arrived yet, right? No, I don't know. And there's some hardware that still on I, I know it won't be finished until the concrete's all poured because they got it adjusted for so it's all level. And, right. So. I don't know the status of possession of street lights, but the plant they got all the electrical done yeah. up front already. Yeah. And the plan is for that company to come back and do all the installing. The south side is done on the electrical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They'll the north, do the north side, side as they go. Yeah. And then the install will happen a couple days in a row to I don't know how long it'll take. Yeah. Who's doing the it minimizes the mobilizations? Planters. Who's doing that? I don't know. They have probably have some contractor. Yeah, yeah. some yeah. contractor. Yeah. I don't know what the road is. Yeah. Anything else? All right. But north sidewalk. If you don't know, IDOT agreed to cover costs to do two and a half feet of sidewalk up to buildings beyond the village's right of way of sidewalks for the Ainsley Office Building, the Shabana Cafe, Carter's Gun Shop, and the Post Office Laundromat Big Building. Um, IDOT's paying for it. It's not costing the owners of the properties anything. All the owners gave verbal consent, and I'm just waiting for two to sign the consent form. Um, to come back. So Royce talked to everybody and then got with me so I mm -hmm. can put together a consent agreement. So I haven't checked the Dropbox at the office. There might be a couple in there. So that was right. it, just so everybody's All right. Next is item D. This will be the first reading. Everybody has a look at the uh, ordinance amending uh, public safety. And this would be uh, for the uh, Consideration approval 202405-20B, the adjudication ordinance. Goes into pretty pretty much detail of how the adjudication would be handled. Um, and a minor question on the uh, does abandoned vehicles that doesn't come come under the IDC, does it? Or it's, it's, it's in the it, ordinance. It's in the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. About this ordinance, but it's in our ordinance. Okay. Because I just want to make sure, we, because it's not IDC, we're not enforcing IDC on this, but, but being a, an operable motor vehicle. Okay. So if it, it, it take, take some time to read this over, this will be the first time you get a shot at it. You know, I'd like to, if you guys could uh, read it over and, and have passed this in June. That way we can start making steps to line up adjudication officers and all of the paperwork. There's going to be a considerable amount of paperwork that's involved with this, notifications, etc. Now all of this, all of the costs should be incorporated into the violations. Sure. We should recoup the cost for all of this through, through, through violations. If we don't have violations, then we're not going to have an adjudication report. If we don't have a court, then we don't incur any costs. But we are looking at uh, some adjudicators in the area that, that are working with some other villages and also looking at um, paper progress through other villages, how they do it. Um, we know 
that there are programs out there. <coughs> we also know that they're very expensive, but a good Excel, Excel, sheet, Excel sheet can probably handle most of the uh, uh, traffic. Yes. So please, please take, take a close look at it. If you have any questions, let me know. I can you know turn turn them over to the counselor and uh, we can move that from there. Any questions immediately? Your first first flush. Is the village going to be <clears throat> employing anybody to be like the hearing person present, or is that going to fall yeah. to an adjudicator? Right. Well, not in addition to the adjudicator, who's going to be sitting representing? Yeah, that is an attorney, but. To keep the records and yeah, it, it can be there can be a police officer, code enforcement officer, or an attorney representing the village at the hearings. Okay. Um, and we have to pay them, right? And then the clerks I was explaining to Jen before the meeting. Said, There's going to be some work that Jen's office is going to have to do. Mm -hmm. And depending on the complexity and the amount of work. The council may want to consider increasing the hours. Well, that is my next question. Then. Yeah. Because I, I am familiar with how these work. And okay. It is, depending on, I don't see it being a lot in this village, but it is going to be, uh, it's going to be an expense we're going to have to bear. Yeah, I can, well, again, if, if it comes out of the fines, you know, we, 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 should be, we should be okay. But I can also see that if it's going to be a belt, it's going to go up immediately, and then it'll, it'll drop off, I think, in the future. I think most communities would say that the fines are covering costs, mm -hmm. cover the expense. Well, there's, that's assuming that there's going to be guilty or viable. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, I would anticipate that there's going to be probably people that are not going to be fined liable as well. We're still going to have to bear that expense. Yeah. Just uh, the few municipalities I've talked to, and I don't a whole lot, but they've been very happy with it. And then I've talked to other ones that have had, they've used the system for a long time, and they said that it was probably the best thing they ever did. It expedites things. It's the fairest way, in their opinion, to do it. And, and it was much quicker. Well, much quicker. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Let's move on to new business. Turn this over to you, John. All right, crossing, crossing guards is on the agenda because after I'm not sure how many years I'm trying to figure it out. Her last paperwork was from 20, only paperwork is from 2014 forwards. And I'm thinking it might have been earlier than that. Denise Hopi has tendered her resignation effective the last day of school, which is this Thursday, as crossing guard. So she's not finding another job. She's just decided she's at that age that she doesn't want to do it or need to do it anymore. So um, May 23rd is the last day of school, so her last day as crossing guard. Um, I'm guessing she's done it at least 20 years, because of 2014, I'm thinking it's longer than that. Um, she had two stints. She did it for a while when yeah. school came yes. out. Yes. So, yep. so it's been, been 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. She's had been dependable. She's been dedicated to her job. She was great with the kids and the parents and everything over all these years. She did. Um, on behalf of the village, I did get her a gift and a card. Um, and I plan on delivering it to her at the beginning of her last shift this Thursday. 2.15 is the dismissal. I thought I'd get there at 2.30. So I'm inviting anybody else that wants to show up if they're able to. Thursday at 2.30. Because uh, if it's raining hard, it'll be very short. <laughs> so, but to uh, thank her, because, I mean, she did a wonderful job over all these years um, on Shavina Road there. And I will also notify the elementary school so that they're aware, so that if any, they can let, put a notice out through their system to parents and that. Um, it does bring up the fact that uh, we need to find another crossing guard. So, yeah. so if any of you know of anyone. <laughs> two and a half months. <laughs> we'll post a job out on the village website after school's done. 
probably right after Labor Day, um, and post it out on Facebook. Our substitute crossing guard is not interested in more hours. She likes the substitute thing because she goes out of town a lot. Who's that? So, Mary Davis. So, but if she said, if initially, and I give her enough notice to coordinate with her, we need some coverage, then uh, she'll be happy to do that. What corner is it? It's uh, Shabana Road at Cherokee. Oh. So, do you want to so the high school kids? Yeah. <laughs> high school and some elementary. I get the shirt. Yeah. And middle school. Yeah. Middle school, too, because uh, they walk. have to go up to the high school to catch the shuttle. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know how many kids cross there. Not very many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just wanted to share that with everybody. So, All right. I'll put an email up to remind you of the date and time. Um, and I'll put it. Now's not the time to talk about it today, but the United fan of the village is having a big crossing guards. Yeah. Personally, it costs us a lot of money, actually. I did when uh, offer to the uh, school when we uh, provided them with that section of land. I said, in, in good faith, you take over the crossing guards and we'll give you the land. But did you over there. So, we didn't get it. Anyway. We're now at the executive session. No, 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 no. Wait. Your witness slip. Oh, I'm sorry. I had a witness slip. Um, I have been um, asked by the uh, attorney for the Potawatomi and I think the representative office in Springfield to sign a um, proponent slip to testify in Springfield. I won't be going down there, but I just they would like to have us have a signature. So I'm just looking for a nod of approval to go ahead and sign sign a signature slip for the hearing. And what's this a hearing for? I think the properties that they're taking over as uh, next to the forest reserve? Yeah, those two buildings they want to make one a office and like a base residence. of operations and the other one will be a living quarters. Mm -hmm. So it's a sign just a component of that. Are they available on the website? I was sent it by a representative. I'll be taking a look at it. I just got it today. Otherwise, I would have much more information than right now. I'm just give you a nod of approval. I'll go ahead and do that. So, <clears throat> that brings us to the end of our regular meeting. Did we get a consensus? Yeah, I think I did. Everybody said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Aye. That's one opposed. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Okay, now, I need a motion to go to executive session. I will make a motion to go into the executive session. Second.